All right, so we haven't done a, uh, a first event video in a little while, and we're gonna, this is gonna be a fun one. So, what's up guys, I'm Gordy. I'm gonna put myself into the shoes of a young new perspective duelist, and it's gonna be my first event. So, my name is George. Hey guys, no, it's my, uh, my first Yu-Gi-Oh event. All right, well, how you doing, George? Uh, I hate Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, why are you going to the event? Uh, I had nothing better to do. Oh, okay, well, George, you got good prospects going for yourself here, buddy. What What can we interest you in? I uh, just want to go and complete my decks without spending money at the vendors. Oh, well, oh. Okay, sure, George. Well, let me help you. Oh, thank you. I, I still hate Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, okay, George, I got it. So... One of the most prospective things for George to to do would be the uh, the pregame. Robbie, why are you making this sound like football? Well, okay, so by pregame, I mean if you're going to your first regional, you're you got to prepare your binder, all right? One of the the first things that I would recommend is do not put cards in your binder that are not for trade, all right? That's right, I said it. I don't give a fuck if your fucking front page of your binder doesn't look fucking fancy as fuck. You know, you got nine YCS prize cards you're trying to put in the front of your binder that you don't want to sell. Nah, fucking stop that shit right fucking now, right? I don't, I don't really care about the nice things that you have. I just care if you hand me an actual trade binder, you know, full of cards for actual trade. All right. I love when you look at a binder, the only important shit is on the fucking front page, and they're like, oh, I don't want to trade that. Like, like what, mate? <laughs> Like, it's, it's the most annoying shit in the fucking world. Don't, don't do that, all right? So, George, life lesson number one. While preparing your binder, do not put cards in your binder that you do not wish to trade. All right? So, build your binder. If, 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 if there are cards that you want to bring to the event, um, either as a translation. What do you mean? As, well, some people play foreign cards, George. No, they don't. Only English territorial card. No, no, George. We, we can play German cards. Oh, okay. So, if you want to bring translations for something because you have a Portuguese blue eyes or something, put it in the back of your binder or put it in your binder upside down. One of the things I actually appreciate, and this, this has become etiquette throughout the years, um, if there's something in a binder, typically, if it's upside down, most people will be like, oh, hey, like, is that for trade? And most people will say no. Typically, it's a universal communication that if something is in a binder face down, that it is not for trade. That is, that is something that's more acceptable because it's something that usually people will pick up at an event as opposed to having it in their binder. But universally, if it's face down in their binder, uh, it's not for trade. As opposed to the front page that people are just fucking putting shit in to make it look nice, you know. Don't don't get offended when somebody, you know, is like, really? Why, why is this in your binder if it's not for trade? Because they're going to be frustrated because it might be the only thing in your binder of value. And you also have to understand that. Number three. If your binder is shit, understand that it is shit. That is probably one of the rudest things I could say. So here's the thing, right? I, I go to events throughout the years... And there are many people asking for high-end cards, but their binder is worth $10. Do not get offended when somebody kindly says, I'm sorry, I can't find anything. You know, thanks for your time. Literally, I've said that phrase to many people throughout the years, and I've actually had a few people be like, oh, you just don't want to trade. Like, no, man. Like, based on current values in the perpetual market, I unfortunately cannot find anything to engage in a transaction of trade with you. I would love to trade you. I really would. But for myself, I do not prefer to lose value. That is <laughs> the most business that the key bullshit I, I can say. But it's honestly the truth. You know, at the end of the day, you might not have the greatest binder in the world. And stay within your expectations. So, George, how much is your binder worth? I don't know. I, I don't know how to look at my cards. Well, thank you, George. Brings me to number four. If you're going to an event, please, for the love of God, make sure you have some way to look at your prices or you've looked at your prices for your cards now this isn't this isn't no bullshit for selling this is to make sure that you are engaging in fair trade value and a lot of people a lot of people need to also understand this buying and selling at events unless with a vendor that is behind a table at a booth designated by konami or 
or there's one other if the regional's at a store and you're buying from the store itself. So understand that you only need to be doing business within the official, you know, blah, 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 blah. So understand that if you're trading, most people will trade by actual value. You know, ask people the value of their cards, you know, get out your smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone to, to educate yourself on prices, you probably shouldn't be trading. Or, you know, if you looked up your prices the day before, that that's fine. You know, there are a lot of people that actually... They'll stay educated a day or so in advance. That's fine. Just understand some days, you know, card prices do change very rapidly. That's one of the things we love about Yu-Gi-Oh! Is at the end of the day, like, this game has such rapid movements and prices that it's actually kind of ridiculous. I, I really wish I could say differently about this game, but, you know, for your, your sake, George, you know, I, I hope you have a smartphone, buddy. Um, or you at least have an idea of what you want to value your cards at, because, unfortunately, there are many people that go to, to events. The, the person that's got to make their, their quote-unquote invisible money for the day, there, there are people that will go to the event just with the uh, pure intention of plussing. Those people are, I'm not going to say they're slightly annoying, but you, you'll know when you run into one of them. And then you'll have people that casually enjoy trading. You know, honestly, I've, I've said this throughout the years. One of the things that always entertains me the most about going to an event is, you know, when you eventually scrub out, you're going to sit down. Trading brings people together. Trading allows you to... I find it the easiest way to talk to uh, somebody that's like, oh my god, you're in pull 40. You know, and then my trade miner, I'm like, yo, let's let's trade and let's have a conversation, you know? If I, I'm honestly a little bit more of a social talker. Um, if I have something in my hand and I'm able to... Uh, uh, I guess multitask is the correct phrasing here. You know, I, I can have a better conversation if I'm doing something instead of just standing there awkwardly. It's nothing against anybody that I've ever had a conversation with, but every person has their own way to bond with somebody. I think that that one is a little bit more of my, my standard of taste. Uh, just engaging in a conversation with people. But understand that there are three kinds of people that you'll see going to a regional. The one that's got to make the money, the one that just wants to trade, and the one that's, oh, fuck, i got to finish my shit. Like, I'm looking for this and only this. The one that's only looking for this and only this is a little bit annoying because I'll be like, hey, do you want to trade? He's like, no, do you have this? I'm like, no. He's like, all right. And he, like, slinks away. And then he'll come back four more times. He's like, have I asked you yet? I'm like, yeah. And he'll be like, oh, okay. And he'll come back the fifth time. He'll be like, sir, you've asked me. And then eventually... They'll come back, they'll be like, oh, I finally found it. And then they'll they'll want to, like, talk. It's, I understand, like, the, the man with the mission kind of thing, but at the end of the day, you know, give it give it a rest, per se. It's the, uh, the best thing that I can honestly say, you know. I get to know the, the three people, you know, because <laughs> you will encounter each of them, and it's not a bad thing if you encounter them. Just for for the sake of your first event, George, you know, make sure that you're you're sticking up to it. Thank you, Robbie. This video has been horribly uneducated, fucking asshole. I learned nothing. Well, then, if you really didn't learn anything, please go to the regional. Please go get ripped off. Oh, please. I I love the stories from people that come back from an event. They're like, oh, I got ripped off. Well, fucking no shit, you didn't. You know, people try to tell you these steps, and you act like. Sometimes that they're this, the most stupidest things. Like, ugh, I have enough common sense, how dare you? Like, yeah, no. It's not how that works. You can be the smartest person in the world, but all it takes is one person to pull the wool over your eyes and bamboozle you. Also, the last thing, and I, I've, I've heard the stuff speech. Every regional, they'll tell you the stuff speech. Somebody values your stuff more than you value your own stuff. It's a quick profit that they can get money off of the internet watch your cards i cannot say this enough all right you i hope would value your cards if you're bringing stuff to an event but there will always be somebody in that room that is looking to steal something for the sake of yourself and the cardboard that you treasure do not bring stuff to an event that you yourself do not wish to get stolen and is not irreplaceable 
This is the part of the, oh, well, I had that in my binder on my front page and my binder got jacked and I lost something from, like, my girlfriend or, like, I actually have heard this story and this is, this is the sad part. Guy had a token with his girlfriend who died. Really sad. His binder got stolen and the only picture that they had together that he could physically hold was taken from him. It was a really sad story and I... I, I have to play devil's advocate here, but if you truly treasure something, don't don't bring it with you. Keep it with some place where you can hold on to the memories and so that you don't lose these things. Because unfortunately, at the end of the day, you yourself put yourself in that situation, and it's really shitty to say that. It really fucking is. But you got to keep it real 24-7. You know, if you start to sugarcoat one thing, you'll start to not be the real person that you should be, and I think that's... It's one of the sad things in life, is the strongest life lesson of all that you can learn, if you truly treasure something, keep it close to you and don't put it in harm's way. That's, sometimes you have to let the things go that you love, but yeah, this is, this is getting really sappy, right? Just keep on keeping on. That's all I got, George. Thanks, Robbie. Uh, I still hate you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, George. I like a, uh, maybe George is a zombie. I'm not quite sure. Seems like a uh, mindless Yu-Gi-Oh player, but could be wrong. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed George's tutorial on going to his first event. George, I hope you uh, hope you do your best, buddy. Uh, all right, guys, bye.